Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video talking to you about this little beast here. Uh, this is the Premium Case Trim and Prep Center from Frankfurt Arsenal. Um, this is going to basically be the next in my series of videos talking about the reloading um, accessories I use to make the process easier. This is one of the more recent additions, but I've still done thousands of cases with this thing so far. Um, this has been my solution to not only trimming cases, but also prepping them for reloading. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is walk you through really what this thing does, what it's designed to do. And then after that, I'll talk to you a little bit more about the features of this thing and my thoughts and experiences with this thing overall. So um, let's go ahead and just show you how to set this thing up and what type of stuff it does. So as you can probably see from this thing, I've, I've been using this thing quite a bit without necessarily cleaning it, but that should be fine for the purposes of what we're going to be doing today, which is just going to be showing you um, how to set this up, how this thing works, and why I really like using this. So just first, right off the bat, a couple of things you're going to need. You're going to need some sort of calipers to be able to measure um, the length, overall length of your case. And then you're going to want some sort of reloading manual, like I have the Hornady manual here. And this is what's going to tell you what you actually need to trim your cases to. Um, so you don't have to have the Hornady one. You can have pretty much any good reloading manual is going to have it. I know some people are going to say, well, hey, I can just find reloading data online. Probably, possibly, um, but I don't want to trust my life to some dude on the internet who uh, I don't know. So don't take my word for it. Just trust a book. Um, you're just going to be protecting yourself that way. All the brass we're going to be using has already been sized on a press and already had the uh, has have been decapped. And the brass that I'm specifically using is Wolf Gold, which means it has the military crimp on it. And so we're going to be taking that off with this thing as well. You definitely want to resize your brass before doing this just because as you're putting it through the press and you know resizing everything properly some of the material might be elongated in some areas so you you want to make sure that these are sized prior to running it through this uh, case trimmer and once we resize a couple of these uh, we're going to go ahead show you how to reset this thing up for 308 and hopefully we'll also be able to gauge um, how consistent the trim length is using this tool. Now I've already had gone ahead and measured all five of uh, each of these 223 cases to make sure that they are all over the case trim length that we're going to go for. Um, so again we should be able to get a pretty good idea of how consistent the trim is across at least five samples right here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out which one of these little collars here is going to be the best size for your case. Um, if you follow the instructions in the manual, uh, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. So I'm not going to go too far in depth into that right now, because obviously if you're buying one of these, you're going to have the manual. Um, but I've gone ahead and picked out the one for 223 or 556. And I'm just going to slide that into our little chamber here. Uh, if it gets kind of cockeyed or anything like that. Um, I'll just use the neck of the case to force that into position. Then we're going to take the uh, little collar here um, for the that actually holds the case in position. Again, your manual is going to tell you how to pick one of those. So I'm going to put that in there as well. And then we're going to take our make sure our O-ring is installed in this. And I'll go ahead and secure this ring back here. I'm just going to get this on over, which can sometimes be a pain. Sometimes the O-ring will slide off, but we'll see if we can't get this thing threaded down. Once we get this thing on, I'm just going to stick a case in here just to see when it gets to the appropriate tightness. So what this ring is doing is um, crimping down on that little collet or collar or whatever you want to call it to make sure that your case is properly aligned as it's being trimmed. So I'm just going to get it tight enough to where there's a little bit of resistance, which again will hopefully, ideally, be applying equal pressure on all sides of the case to make sure it is being fed perpendicular to the cutting blades. And that should be right about where we want. So now that we have this indexed properly, I'm going to go ahead and loosen this back collar here which is counter-threaded, um, so instead of righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, it's uh, lefty-tighty, righty-loosey, um, which 
is even hard for me to say. Um, so we'll go ahead and loosen this thing a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna start threading this thing down until uh, the cutting blades just barely make contact with the neck. Okay, so I have this thing at the point where it's just barely about to touch, and I like to take it slow on this first case to make sure everything is going to be cutting properly. Um, that way I don't run the risk of ruining a case or taking too much off right off the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and secure this rear portion down. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and throw this collar on over the top. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Um, you know, come at me, bro. If, 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 if you're OSHA watching, just, I guess, avert your eyes for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing on and then, um, we should not be making contact yet. Okay, so just as I suspected, we are not yet making contact. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quarter of a turn. So a quarter of a turn on this thing um, should still be within the um, the length of the longest case that I have here and what our case trim length is. So I still feel pretty confident that I'm not gonna be taking too much off, but let's go ahead and check. So we're still not making contact. So again, I'm gonna loosen this thing up, go another quarter turn. All right, and that time I could feel it make contact. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see from where you're looking at the camera, um, but if you have any doubt as to whether it made contact with the blade or not, you should be able to see a nice, clean, shiny, hard edge on the top of this neck here. And that will definitely let you know that you have made contact. If you're just barely making contact, you might notice a flat area on maybe just a quarter of the neck. Um, so you wanna go until you get a nice, clean edge all along here. Now, I personally will not measure the case length at this point simply because I may or may not have a burr um, on the outside edge of this neck. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is to use the chamfering and deburring tools here to give myself a nice proper neck here and then I'm going to take my case measurement. Okay, so again, I'm going to the overall length for the case trim length according to my reloading manual. And right now I am seven thousandths above the case trim length. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get it exactly right on this tool. Okay, so I went ahead and just did a eighth of a rotation, which should be five thousandths. So let's see if uh, we're getting a little bit closer to our desired number. Okay, and the micrometer numbers on the barrel seem to be pretty much spot on for mine because I went uh, an eighth of a turn, which is five thousandths, and it took exactly five more thousandths off. So I'm gonna try to get it perfect here to where I'm only taking off another two thousandths. and we are exactly at our case trim length. So now that I have this thing set, I'm just gonna make sure my little collar back here is nice and tight. And let's go ahead and without adjusting anything, normally I'll do the first couple, checking each and every one, um, just because there are gonna be variances in cases. Um, so let's go ahead and just do all five of them, uh, well, the other four, and see how close the overall length measurements are.
All right, so I went ahead and did all five, and you may have noticed, I didn't mention this, um, I have the chamfering and deburring tools here, and then you have this third position up here as well, which normally it comes with the uh, primer pocket scrubbers. Um, however, I have a deburring tool, um, or excuse me, a, a primer pocket tool to uh, get rid of the crimps on uh, the NATO style cartridges. So uh, after doing the chamfering and deburring, went ahead and just cleared out all those primer pockets so I can actually reload these with new primers in the future. So let's go ahead, now that we've cut them all down, let's measure them and see how close we are. Yeah, 1759, interesting. So we have a spread of nine thousandths um, across these five. I had two of them at 755, two of them at 750, and then one of them at 1.1759. Uh, so spread of nine thousandths for my purposes, that is more than adequate. I'm just trying to get it down below that maximum case length. And by setting my bottom at the uh, minimum case length, I'm giving myself still plenty of room in there for margin to still keep it at a safe uh, length that will be properly to spec and possibly give me the ability to not have to trim a couple of these after this next firing. So now that I've run it with 223, let's go ahead and see how long it takes for me to retool this thing for 308. And then we'll cut down a couple of these cases and see again what kind of consistency we get with that. Okay, so two and a half minutes later, um, we have this already set up for 308. Now I did already have the correct callers um, picked out. However, if you're only reloading two different calibers, you're probably gonna know exactly which ones you need um, before you actually try to start using it. So again, I have it set up so it's just barely about to touch. So we're gonna go ahead, just double check and confirm. And then I'll just repeat the same process until we are ready to actually trim the rest of these five cases down to the correct length according to my reloading manual. And with these, I have an extreme spread of six thousandths. Again, if I'm doing more than five, there's probably gonna be a bigger variation. And these are all the same brand of brass, um, specifically Aguila. Um, but again, we're looking at six thousandths from uh, two inches, four thousandths, up to two inches and 10 thousandths. So pretty, pretty dang close. And definitely close enough for the type of shooting I'm doing. So with that demo out of the way, um, let's just talk about a little bit more of what you can expect if you order one of these. So um, as I mentioned, it comes with several of the bits, but it does not come with the case crimp, uh, the primer crimp removal tools for either small primers or large primers. So those are things I had to purchase separately, but because the thread pattern is um, compatible with all the other reloading accessories out there, you can go to pretty much anywhere and order those or even order order them online if you so choose. And the nice thing too is me, I have a pretty nasty tendency of just kind of, after I use a tool, just kind of leaving it out and then I things get put on top of them and I lose them. This comes with its own compartment and storage for all that. So you can actually open this thing up and it's a pretty um, stout latch on this thing. So it's not gonna come open on its own. And in there you can store, it comes with all the other uh, neck shims as well as the case um, holders, I guess, for lack of a better term. But you can also put your uh, primer pocket cleaners in there. You can put your case, uh, uh, the primer crimp removal tools in there. Pretty much anything you need, you can actually store in here, stays in here, and you don't have to worry about it going anywhere. And one of the other nice things about this is as you saw, I had it set up, set, set down like this on the included legs. If you have a shortage of space on your workbench, you can actually take this whole stand piece off and just use it sitting upright like this, in which case you can just drop the cases vertically into the trimmer, put them on the uh, chamfer and deburring tools, the primer pocket cleaning tools, however you wanna do it, and that's just gonna take up a lot less space and um, you know may or may not make the cleanup easier or at least just maximize your workspace. As far as why I got this, um, Again, I'm, I'm still fairly new to reloading. I've only been doing it a couple of years now, and I was having difficulty reloading specifically rifle cases, and more specifically 223. 223 is the thing that I probably reload in the way of rifles more than anything else. And what I found myself doing is, <laughs> unfortunately, measuring each and every case after it was decapped and resized, 
and seeing if it was under the maximum overall length for 223. So that meant I had a ton of brass just sitting around that was too long for me to reload, at least correctly, and I didn't really have anything to do with it because if I wanted to order a case trimmer, a dedicated case trimmer can run you about a hundred bucks. And that was a pretty large investment for me. So I was looking around at what else was on the market and I thought, okay, well I can get the trimming tool. And I already had, um, Lee makes these dedicated um, case trimmers for specific calibers where you lock the base in and then you have to run the cutter on it. And they're pretty cheap but it's all manual and it's very exhausting. Um, and again, to go up to something that's bench mounted, you're looking at around $100, if not considerably more, depending on which one you get. But again, then on top of that, after you trim the cases, you have to chamfer and deburr the neck of the case, possibly uh, take it, uh, get rid of any military style crimping on the bottom of that case. And all those tools really start adding up and you're easily starting to look at a couple hundred dollars once you have everything pieced together. Maybe a little bit cheaper if you want to do everything by hand, but that gets really, really exhausting when you're doing hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of cases. So what this has allowed me to do is knock out all of those processes in one tool and save money in the process. Now, these are not cheap, but it's considerably cheaper to get something like this that has everything than to start piecemealing it together. And then again, you start running into the issue of running out of workspace and losing small individual tools here and there. And again, um, I, I consider myself a somewhat fit individual, but my hands get really, really tired when I'm going through hundreds and hundreds of case necks, chamfering, deburring, and then going for that primer pocket. So again, this just makes that process considerably easier uh, by leaps and bounds. Now, that's not without its faults. The biggest downside is you cannot do straight walled cases. So, um, you know, 30 carbine, um, a lot of those pistol ca calibers out there, you cannot trim these because it index off the neck of the case. So it's really only rifle calibers or probably like 357 SIG, but I'm not even sure you could get this to let you do a case that short, um, which kind of leads into the question that I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, well, what about 300 Blackout? 300 Blackout has a very, very, very minor case neck. However, I have successfully trimmed 300 Blackout with this, but because the case length is so short, you're really only getting the very, very bottom of the case. Some people complain that it's not enough for them to grab onto. Me personally, I haven't had an issue with that. Um, but just to let you know, there are people out there who complain about that. Me, no issue whatsoever. I can do 300 blackout brass just fine. But if I, again, wanted to do 30 carbine brass, that's not something I can do with this. So that's something I would have to get a separate case trimmer for. Now, the good side of that is specifically when it comes to pistol brass, like nine millimeter, I have never once trimmed a nine millimeter case and I've reloaded certain cases upwards of five, six times if I'm lucky. Um, and I haven't had any issues related to the uh, case length at all. All of them have fed just fine without that trimming of the case. Now, as I understand it, I'm not a scientist here. I'm not a metallurgist. Don't so take this with, with a grain of salt, but as I understand it, the uh, elongation of the case really happens mostly with bottleneck cases because now that pressure is being forced forward and the neck of the, the bottleneck allows a surface for that gas to act upon and actively push outward. Whereas with the straight wall cases, it, the gas is more easily able to go straight out. Is that true? I don't know. I have, um, again, I'm not a metallurgist, but that's my understanding. So even my friend who has a 30 carbine and reloads 30 carbine, he doesn't trim his cases and he says he's had good experiences with that. So again, take that for what it is. I haven't tried that myself, but I can say nine millimeter, I don't trim the necks and it works just fine. So for the cases that it does matter, this will work and has worked again for me for several thousand rounds at this point. And uh, some of the tools are starting to show it, but the nice thing is if I do decide to replace the cutter, the chamfer or deburring tools or whatever else, because that thread pitch is universal, I can just go out to my local shop order in some new parts or go online, do the same thing. And I'm 100% good to go. So um, this, this has really been an integral part of my reloading process because I'm going through thousands of cases. Um, something like this just makes my life so much easier. Again, even if it's a little bit more expensive, it does all the, the tasks automatically. I don't have to sit there and work 
the neck of each case with a hand tool just makes life so much simpler. Now, um, as you saw from my demonstration, um, there are some limitations as far as the accuracy of the case length from, from case to case. For my purposes, which is mostly just plinking ammo, it's good enough. Now, just for reference, uh, I was doing a lot of reloading with 55 grain pulled bullets. So we're not talking match grade bullets, we're talking pulled 55 grain bullets. And um, with this and you know my powder of measure and everything else, I was still getting inch to inch and a half groups out of my 20 inch AR. So again, for my purposes, that's more than accurate enough. If you are doing absolute top precision level shooting, maybe you want a different case trimmer so you can get that you know within thousands of each other. But again, I'm I'm still within tens of thousands with this thing um, easily. So that's again good enough for what I needed to. So again, um, I, I've been a really big fan of this. I think for the money, this is the best option on the market. If you're looking for a one-stop shop, especially for those of you new reloaders out there who don't already have certain components, um, I would recommend just starting with this thing. If you're someone who already has a case trimmer that you like and you're just looking for some of the other accoutrements, um, maybe this might not be the best option. But again, for those of you just starting out, you need all these tools because you're starting fresh. I think this is definitely a good place to look. And what I'm going to go ahead and do too is just throw a uh, link down in the description to Amazon where you can find these. Uh, you can read all the other reviews there. Um, again, I'm a really, really big fan. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw those in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, if you have another method that you like for your case prep, whether it be trimming, chamfering, deburring, anything like that, definitely let me know. Uh, I am always open to uh, suggestions on how to streamline my process and make it easier for myself. Um, eventually, I will be doing videos on the actual reloading process itself, not just the case prep as I've done up to now, but the reloading itself. But unfortunately, because of YouTube's restrictions, I probably won't be posting that to YouTube. It'll be to my other uploading venues like GunStreamer or Full30. So just be on the lookout for that if that's something you're interested in. Um, but anyway, <laughs> with all that said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.